it's the moment. And you will see in 10 years that the, 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 the value will go up 100 times. So it's, it's a nice moment to do it. It's always good to be the first. When people naturally want it, it becomes collectible. To talk about, to be proud of, to show to your friends, knowing every year that you get more value to its price. The world of rum has real potential. The next investment grade trend in spirits. And hopefully, time to time, some of them will drink it. I'm Damien Horner, co-founder of Real Vision. This is the third and final part of my exploration of alternate investments, a look at the kinds of assets that people turn to when the markets are volatile and the economic future is uncertain. In other words, times just like the ones we're living through right now. In episode one, we looked at classic cars, art and wine. But quickly, we focused in on the meteoric rise in whiskey prices. And that has led me to this episode, where I want to discover whether rum could follow in the same footsteps of whiskey and be the next big thing. Let's remind ourselves what was said about rum as a potential investment. There are some very strong parallels with rum where it is now and where single malt was 20 years ago. I genuinely believe that the rum category could be the next major investment grade segment in the market. There's definitely been a surge in demand for quality spirits. And as we search for the companies other than whiskies that produce this, we definitely find that rum is in that, in that specific category that we look for, for fantastic aged spirit. In the time series from 2014 to 2018, the category has been growing at 16% per annum which is actually more than any other premium spirits category. Collectors and investors love and appreciate the history, provenance and nuances of dark spirits. I wanted to know how these manifested themselves within rum. Rum has nearly always been a kind of diffident player, especially when you put it up against Scotch whisky, which has always shouted loudly about its provenance, its history and its heritage. Rum has equal amounts of provenance, history and heritage. And it's interesting to see rum starting to draw on that and build uh, around those and put real foundations down in terms of pushing itself towards investment grade and collectible products. So which are the brands that are catching the eye when it comes to investment grade rums? It's really led by the, um, by the bigger brands. So I, I'd say that um, Havana Club probably are, are your number one at the moment. Um, I mean, Dictador is definitely starting to emerge in this category with their Two Masters project. Um, and I think their association with whiskey brands has helped that a lot. They did a collaboration with Glenn Farkless, which really worked. I would pull out the Four Square Distillery, um, uh, the Barbados Four Square Distillery, which is doing some incredible casking. I, I would look at uh, Plantation Rum, uh, which is doing some uh, curation of different rums from around the world. Uh, I would look at Dictador from uh, Colombia, who have uh, incredible age stocks of rum um, and doing some really interesting things with those in terms of the, their bottlings and the vintages they're releasing. We learned from the whiskey experts in episode two that it isn't just scarcity that drives the secondary market, but also brands creating special products and limited editions specifically for the collectors. Rum distillers have obviously seen this and are following suit. Brands like Dictador, which are strongly focused on that secondary market, are actually driving that with expressions designed to be both drunk and enjoyed, but also to be collected. There is a strong aesthetic in terms of building a really engaging brand story, beautiful packaging and extraordinary liquids. Dictador rum I know has some cracking vintage rum, uh, Colombian rum, uh, aged in Colombia, but also uh, in their partnerships with other producers such as Royal Tokai and uh, Hardy's Cognac, um, Champagne Houses and uh, Glen Farkless Single Malt. It has to taste good. And again, coming back to a company like Dictador, because they have this series called The Two Masters in which they're partnering with other industry 
icons. They, they are providing a, a sample of a liquid that is just so unique, so beautiful, so rare, that it's natural for people to want it. And this is the key thing. When people naturally want it, it becomes collectible. We've heard a lot about Dictador as being one of the rum brands that is making waves in investor circles with a cask that recently sold at auction for over $40,000. I wanted to find out more about this brand. Well, Dictador is a, it's a long history. It's over 100 years that uh, we've been out there. Uh, we started at the beginning of last century with my grand-grandfather. And he came to Colombia with his partner and he noticed that here there was no much of the development of this uh, industry. And he noticed that there was not the same uh, uh, possibilities in terms of raw materials like they have in Spain, but they found out sugarcane. And the sugarcane was a very easy, very huge uh, opportunity of making some of the uh, wine and spirits. The first 50 years was a very simple way of doing the, the, the rums and a very easy way of drinking them. But in the second half of the company, the second uh, part of the century, uh, we started to notice that using uh, barrels that start aging the rums in, in, in long terms have been uh, uh, the proven of, of, of the, the new rums history. And all these uh, footsteps that they've been doing for so many years are inside the liquid. They are our uh, heritage. It's, our, it's, it's what it's based on. And I think the history is totally into the liquid. That's what I think that you can feel when you, when you have a taste of the rum. When you have a good product, when you have a real nice high-end product, the world is going to be open to drink it and to have it and to buy it and to invest in it. Which is, I think, the most important thing for us, that uh, we can deliver a real liquid. And after the liquid, the uniqueness of the old stock, which is really rare and really unique. And I think that there's not another distillery that can come up with this kind of inventory. Dictador are almost unique in having the one last significant cache of very old rums left in the world. Rums up to the age of 40 years of age, which have incredible layering, which have incredible complexity. And the work that the brand has done with something like Dictador Two Masters is really laudable. Two Masters sounds like one of the standout projects for investors to get behind in the rum world right now. I looked into it in a little bit more detail. We have a fantastic 40 up old rums. So what to do? What should we do to make it even more unique? A fantastic series which has involved collaborations with many of the great master winemakers and master spirit makers in the industry. Uh, normally people, what they do is do finishing of the products in a different barrel. So they bring barrels from different producers and do the finishing in their premises. And we decided that why not let's involve the other company, not only to sell me the barrel, but to be able to receive my rum, to age it and to involve their master blender to be part of the project. If you look at a brand like Dictador, uh, doing their two masters program with other incredible producers like Glen Farkless Sir Single Malt in Glen Farkless casks in the Glen Farkless warehouses. This for me is, is a real area of interest because you're getting twice the power, if you like, um, of two great brands. And that's, that's what's really interesting about the creativity that happens within rum, which you're not allowed to do within Scotch. So really forging ahead with great creativity, producing beautiful individual pieces, liquids which have incredible intrigue, great age, and actually we're getting in on the ground floor of what I believe could well be the next investment grade trend in spirits. I'm brought back to my central question. Can rum do what whiskey has done in terms of collectability? Is now the time to get into the market before everyone else cottons on to its potential? For me, the world of rum has real potential in investment grade uh, bottlings, partly because there is incredible old stocks of, of liquid lying around. And if you look back at the way that Scotch has developed, it's because there was a, a lack of demand in the 80s and 70s, which meant that whiskey that came through in the 90s and the noughties was incredibly good quality and incredibly well aged. And rum has a similar thing. There's a, a lake of great old rum sitting out there. 
when we look at really how much collectible rum there is out there, I mean, there, there's enough, but there's not that much in the grand scheme of things. So there's an enormous space for brands and independent bottlers to get involved in and really develop and build this. It's all about finding trusted bottlers and trusted producers from trusted regions. So where scotch can be tied up with over-regulation at times, rum can let itself down with a lack of regulations. But equally, I think that makes the market quite exciting and just means you have to uh, build those relationships with the trusted rum producers that are out there. As normal in any of these businesses, when you go first, you get the best options. You will see the growth of the, of the value. You will see the growth of the market. Uh, so it's very interesting to go now. If I was a collector, I might, and, I, and I, if I was really interested in rum, I might look at this as an enormous opportunity to be able to build something truly significant, collect rum at this stage, and then you know, see the benefit of that and, in a few years' time. Once the, 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 the investment grade starts in a, in a spirit, it doesn't stop. It means like with the wines and whiskies, it's not that they will stop doing the investment in whiskey. Actually, it's growing and growing every year. But the rum, it's the biggest and the fastest growing, uh, not only in the, in, the, in the investment grade, it's also in the whole market of the world. Rum, it's growing really fast and rum, specifically in the high-end rums. So it's the moment. And you'll see in 10 years that the, 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 the value will go up 100 times. So it's, it's a nice moment to do it. It's always good to be the first. Well, there we go. I feel that my journey through the world of alternative investments is coming to an end. I started with my first love, which is classic cars. Then we looked at art, fine wines and champagnes before getting into dark spirits. Whiskey is the standout performer in that space. But time and time again, it was rum that caught my eye. It really does feel like rum is set to follow the success of whiskey, and I'm fascinated to see how it will develop as an investment asset. Brands like Dictador are leading the way, but the whole of the rum industry is raising its game. I think it's safe to say that I'll be procuring a barrel or two. The hardest thing about an investment like this will be resisting the urge to drink it. <laughs>